What is up, everybody? J. Nell here. The Natural says hello. If you'd like to see my full afro, check out my last minute movie review. I do World War Z, and this is the end. But we are here for my predictions for UFC 162. Let's get into it. I'm taking a risk. I'm doing way more predictions than I normally do, but this entire card, entire card, including the prelims, is stacked. So getting into it, first up, I'm choosing one of my guys to watch. Edson Barbosa to beat Rafaelo Oliveira. I'm choosing Gabriel Gonzaga to beat Ed Herbin. I'm choosing Andrew Craig to beat Chris Lieben. Another one of my guys to watch is Cub Swanson. I'm choosing him to beat Dennis Seaver. Now, Mark Munoz, Tim Botish. I have such a hard time with Tim's last name, like my lips. It might be too red. Okay. <laughs> So these two guys are very evenly matched for me. Um, strong wrestling bases, developed a good strong uh, stand-up game. I think this is going to come down to basically who wants it more. It's going to be one of those. This is going to be a brawl. I'm looking forward to this. We could have a bloody decision on our hands. So for me, who wants it more is going to be Tim. Uh, his last loss was very unfortunate. It happens, but there was an accidental headbutt in the first round, which opened up a gash open over the eye, which bled profusely throughout the entire fight. It sucked. He was clearly visually impaired. Plus, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe he did suffer either an injury or he did hurt uh, his left hand, right hand. Correct me if I'm wrong in that. Give me the information on that. Either way, a loss is a loss, but it was an unfortunate loss, and I really think that it's going to drive him. Plus, I think he might be the stronger of the two. Might be the stronger of the two. I think he hits harder, and I, I think he's going to have more heart than Mark. So I'm choosing Tim. Next up, I'm choosing... Tim Kennedy to beat Roger Gracie. As you, you can see how sure of that I am. <laughs> Next up, go main event. I'm choosing uh, Frankie Edgar to beat Charles Olivier. I think he's basically going to overwhelm him with activity like he does a lot of his opponents. He is stronger than he looks. He's very hard to finish, as we all have seen. And um, I think he's got a little chip on his shoulder after that Jose Aldo loss. I think he's going to be looking to prove something. So I'm choosing Frankie Edgar. Now, main event we have Chris Weidman challenging the UFC middleweight champion Anderson the spider Silva and yes he deserved all of that introduction <laughs> so all right look Chris Weidman ain't no joke let me just put it out there he is a strong wrestler strong with his Brazilian jiu-jitsu great submissions and he is he has that attack in him. A lot of people are saying that he's like Chael Sonnen, but with a better stand-up game and with Killer Instinct. Now, he does have Killer Instinct. He finishes people. He's 9-0. He's 28 years old. Will he be stronger than uh, Anderson Silva? Ah, that wrestling, it creates that functional strength. So I'm going to say there might be an edge there in Weidman's uh, favor with the strength. Now, for me, his experience... Now, I know, I know, John Jones won the title, youngest ever, you know, but he, his opponents that he's faced, for me, are not on the level of the opponents that Anderson Silva has faced. I'm not going to take anything away from them, but he just, I don't think he's ever been in the ring with anyone close to Anderson Silva, all right? Um, Anderson Silva is 38 years old, so what type of condition is he in? Has he, was he injured in practice? Uh, how was he? He's had 33 fights, or 33 wins, four losses. Long fighting career. What kind of shape is he in? A lot of people think he's over the hill. Is he over, do you think Anderson Silva's over the hill? Answer that. All right. So, all these things come into play. Experience does come into play, especially when you're against someone like Anderson Silva. So, he's going to try to take him down. Can he take him down? Yes, I do believe he can. It's going to be very hard for him to do if he gets him up against that fence, though, because Anderson uses that as, like, uh, another person in the ring helping him, okay? So he's going to have to do it in open space, which means he's going to have to try to take Anderson down while trying to duck and dodge all that precision accuracy offense. And we're talking knees, elbows, fists, kicks, everything, okay? <laughs> so I just don't think he's there yet. Look, I don't think Chris Weidman is the best that he's going to be yet. I really don't. I think this kid's going to get better. And so having said that, I think he's got to be his best to beat Anderson Silva right now. I know he's 38, but he's never been beat up. He's had injuries, but I, he's not that old in fighting years, okay? So I just don't think that Chris has fought the necessary quality opponents 
to prepare him for something like this. I think this is going to be an eye-opening experience for him. And I can't think of anyone better to have your first loss to than Anderson Silva. Seriously, who better to give you your first ass whooping? Anderson Silva. Man, I lost my first fight to Anderson Silva. <laughs> That's awesome. It's awesome, Chris. And look, I think that this first loss may just be the spark that puts him over that hump to get him to the best Chris Weidman that he can be. Because I don't think he's there yet. I think he can get better. So how about that? I actually think Chris Weidman is going to get better after he loses to Anderson Silva. <laughs> so tell me your picks. Any injury updates? Any changes in fights? You know it happens all the time. Answer some of them questions I was asking back then. And uh, yeah, take care everyone. And goodbye.